My name is Owen Ryan, and on behalf of Atlanta Constance Sampson, I want to welcome you all here. And the paintings you see in this room, I want you to consider them just an hors d'oeuvre, a sampling of a lifetime of work. And I urge you all to go over to the rotunda and see her work. When I met Atlanta in 1987, by, after seeing one of her paintings in the window of a New York City delicatessen, I had no idea of the journey that, that this would take me on. And what this really is a tribute to Atlanta, and never giving up, never once losing sight of her dream. And for everyone here today, when you see her work, to keep that in mind. And I'd like to introduce Senator Charles Grassley from Atlanta's state of Iowa to say a few words. Senator Grassley. Thank you. Uh, first, I would read a telegram from Atlanta, because uh, as you know, she cannot be here. It says, Honorable Senators, I want to thank you so much for giving me this special honor today. It saddens me greatly that I'm not able to travel to Washington on this most exciting day of my life to be with you and my work. Doctor's orders are doctor's orders, particularly at my age. After a, a lifetime of work uh, struggling as an artist, obviously, uh, even late in life, this is a tremendous honor. Her work was discovered at the age of 91 in the window of a New York delicatessen. We just kept on, that's all. <laughs> so I would get in sometime. I think their attitude is that it's impossible for anyone 91 years old to have been painting in New York for 30 years and for them not to know about them. It's sort of like, we only sell Picassos here. I'd now like to introduce Senator Paul Wellstone from Minnesota, the state Atlanta was born in and where she received her early education and her education in art. Senator Wellstone. Thank you, Owen. My, my, um, Chuck, my mother, Mincha Danishevsky, would love that. Art discovered at a delicatessen. She grew up in the Lower East Side of New York City. Um, I can't uh, add much to, the, to Chuck's words, but I would like to say uh, at this gathering, and Shill and I sent a letter to Atlanta today, that um, her life, her art and her life is uh, a metaphor for for hope and, and determination and strength of people. What attracted me to um, Atlanta, uh, the story of her life, is that she was born in 1896, and my father, Leon Wellstone, who was a Soviet, who was a Jewish immigrant from what used to be the Soviet Union, was born in 1897. And we have in our home uh, files, I said this to Owen, uh, drawers are full of plays and novels and essays. He always wanted to be a Chekhov, but he, his work was never recognized, and he passed away in 1983, still not discovered. But somehow, I feel like Atlanta's life um, really reinforces to me the importance of my dad's life. My dad, I once read something that he wrote. He said, if a play of mine was ever published, I would dedicate it to all in me which is unsurrendered and unsurrendering. And I think that Atlanta is really that kind of person and speaks really to all of us. Thank you very, very much for letting me be here. Senator Regal, before we introduce you, that we just found out today that in 1935, Atlanta Sampson uh, won first prize in the International Watercolors Competition in Detroit, Michigan. So with those words, I'll introduce you. Uh, that was literally three years before my time. I arrived in the scene in 1938. But uh, uh, the, the wonderful thing about uh, art and, uh, and this uh, tremendous expression of self that art uh, depicts is that uh, even though uh, we do not have our honored guest with us, in effect, we do in, in, in the work uh, that's uh, represented. And um, I think to all of us who uh, draw inspiration from the creativity of others, and particularly those of us who, who love paintings and graphic arts and so forth. Uh, those people uh, uh, living today, uh, in this instance, nearly an entire century, uh, in producing uh, really exceptional work uh, right out of a, one's own soul, 
uh, enriches uh, everyone else and lifts us all. And uh, so it's very fitting that uh, we have this opportunity to, to gather today uh, and acknowledge uh, that work, that talent, uh, that commitment, that kind of lifetime achievement. And uh, so, uh, in a sense, uh, well, I, I wish uh, we had our featured artist uh, here with us. In effect, we do. And uh, that uh, is, is, is really, I suppose, uh, what, what her, her life has been and uh, in, in is. So with that, let me thank all of you for coming. And uh, I know others have spoken before I got here, and others may speak uh, later. But uh, let me thank everyone uh, who has come by today and to be part of this tribute. Thank you. In closing, I, I want to say uh, again and urge you all to see her work in the rotunda. This is a woman that in the course of her life painted thousands of paintings. This is a woman who during the course of her life went searching for galleries and museums with the same vigor and determination that she painted. She was not an Emily Dickinson who was painting alone. She arrived in New York when she was nearly 60 years old in the youth-oriented 60s and I'm sure Many, many dealers thought, well, your work's beautiful, but here comes grandma and it's too late. Well, it's a reminder to us all that we all have dreams. And Atlanta has been an inspiration to me. And by virtue of this story, which has traveled around the world, it's a story that will inspire others. I'm also very happy to announce that today we received a call from O. Alden James, who's president of the National Arts Club in New York City. Uh, the National Arts Club is an institution a few years younger than Atlanta. <laughs> and they had her first show in 1988. And I'm pleased to announce that uh, from November 2nd to November 21st of this year, the National Arts Club will present her second one-woman show. What Atlanta really is is an inspiration to us all as living, breathing people that art is not about its commercial success. Art is not about whether or not somebody is saleable. Art is about seeing the beauty in life and capturing it. When I met Atlanta, she said, when I said, Atlanta, how could you live like this? Because it struck me that she was destitute. Atlanta said, no, it's only by your terms. I am only poor when I have nothing to paint with. And she said, look at this. And she showed me the grocery bags that she painted on when she couldn't afford materials. Those of you who will see the show in the rotunda, don't just look at the front of the paintings. Walk around and look at the back. And you'll see that many of them are painted on both sides. opportunity to continue studying what she calls her obsession, painting. An obsession all my life, I had to do it. It's just as necessary as eating and sleeping. Oh, it was really necessary, you know, I just cut kind of an inner drive, I had to do it. It's just as necessary as eating and sleeping. You must keep on, you must not quit.